and welcome to The Primary Storyline, a video series about post-production as it relates to Final Cut Pro 10 motion and compressor. My name is Andrew Gormley, and I will be your host. Is this podcast looking a little more crisp to you? Are you watching closely? Because if so, you have noticed that we are now exporting this on YouTube in 4K and we're downscaling it to 1080 for iTunes, so there are quality improvements across the board. It's not that you asked for it, it's just I wanted to try it, and it looks pretty good. So there we go. In this episode, we'll be talking about two large, often requested topics that are the foundation of nearly every project, media management, and working with proxy and optimized media. It's not super sexy, but knowing how it works will make things like project archiving and transfer a quick and painless process. As an added bonus, once you master generated media, you'll be able to edit things like 4K footage on even the humblest of MacBooks. So first, let's take a look at where Final Cut anticipates storing all of your media in a brand new library. I've created this one right here named Media Management, and inside of it I've created an event called Media Management. Now, I want to stress that this library lives on an external Thunderbolt drive. It is not on my boot disk where the footage we'll be working with is located. So the first thing we want to do is view the library properties. And to do that, just click on the library and then open the inspector by pressing this button right here or Command-4 on your keyboard. Because this is a brand new library, you could see that it takes up less than 200 kilobytes, but we'll be changing that very shortly. The thing I want to focus on while we're here is this Modify Settings button next to Storage Locations. On the window that appears, you can see the four categories of storage in Final Cut Pro 10: Media, Motion Content, Cache, and Backups. Next to each in the dropdown, you can see the default locations where Final Cut will store them. Media and Cache both live in the library. Motion Content lives in the Motion Templates folder. And Backups lives, unsurprisingly, in a folder called Final Cut Backups. If at any time you want to verify the paths of these folders, simply hover your mouse over the dropdown and a pop-up will appear. So media and cache can both live in the library or a folder of your choosing. Backups always lives in a folder of your choosing, or you can choose not to save them at all. And finally, motion content can only live in the motion templates folder or in your library. As it stands now, I like all of these settings, so I'm just going to cancel and import some footage. So you can see here, I'm on a folder called footage import which is on my boot drive. Here's all the footage in this folder, which I'm going to select. And then what I'd like to do is just turn your attention over to this right-hand column where I'm going to go through the settings that I'm going to have enabled for this import. So unless you've set it up otherwise, like you see here, Final Cut actually defaults to having the media live inside the library, which would be this option right here, copy to library. For the sake of media management and a really cool feature I'm gonna show you in a little bit, I'm going to choose to leave the files in place, so they're going to continue to live in this footage import folder. Dropping down, I'd also like to make sure that both create optimized and create proxy media are selected here, so that on import, Final Cut will generate ProRes proxy and ProRes 422 versions of all of these clips. So once all that's set up, I'm going to press import. If we open the background tasks window right now, you'll see that the transcoding and analysis is taking place. And through the magic of editing, we are gonna skip all the way through this. Okay, that was a fun little bit of time travel there. Nobody wants to see transcoding happening. Not that you can really see it happening anyway, but I'm going to uh, now close the background tasks window. And what I'd like to do is revisit the library properties window by clicking on the library. You can see now that we've jumped up from 200 kilobytes to 2.6 gigabytes. And if we go to the bottom, you can see how we arrived at that number. Notice that the library total is the sum of the optimized and proxy media because we opted to leave the files in place on import. So you see that we have nine gigs of files that live on my boot drive, and then 2.6 gigs that live split between optimized and proxy media on my external drive. I want to show you what this means because it's a fundamental concept of Final Cut Pro 10's media management that is unlike all other editing platforms. So what I'm gonna do is swing over here and open a finder window and navigate to the footage import folder right here. Here we see what Final Cut refers to as your original media. 
Next, I'd like to navigate to the actual Final Cut library. So it's on this external drive, Final Cut Libraries, Media Management. When you're here, right click on it and show package contents. We're gonna click on this. This is the event, Media Management. And now you'll see we have three folders here, Original Media, Render Files, and Transcoded Media. If we open Original Media, you will see a list of what appears to be the exact same files from the footage import window. But if we look a little bit closer in icon view, you could see that these are just aliases pointing back to these files that live on my boot drive. We have not made a copy, we just made aliases that reference the originals. Let's go back up one level and check out transcoded media. Here you see we have high quality media and proxy media folders. Let's double click on high quality media. Now if we take a look at the file sizes here, you can see that on average they are much larger than the original counterparts. With the exception of the 4K footage, which is totally uncompressed, and that AVI file, which is about the same, it just had really bad compression on the AVI side of things. If we swing over to proxy media, you could see that these file sizes are significantly smaller. Also, if we open one of these clips, you'll see that the resolution is also significantly smaller. These proxy clips are limited to 960 by 540, whereas this one is 1920 by 1080, the full resolution. So just to recap, because we chose leave files in place on import, the original media lives in the footage import folder on my boot drive right here. The optimized and proxy media lives in the library itself on the external drive. Now with that in mind, let's swing back over to Final Cut Pro. I'm going to create a new project and throw all of these clips down into the timeline. So we'll do this, call it test. We will select them all and then press E and shift Z to fit it all into view. I'm now going to show you how easy it is to actually create a proxy edit. Anytime I hear someone say they're having a difficult time editing either high bitrate, raw, or 4K footage, the first question I ask is if they've generated proxies. I'm not exaggerating when I say you will be able to edit 6K red projects on a laptop as long as you generate these proxies. So I'm actually going to select this clip right here, the tiniest one, as an example. We can see that it's mostly sky and a graffitied fence, but there are some fine details here. Aside from being pretty flat, this is in focus and ready to be used. By default, you will be viewing and editing original or optimized media, and original will always take precedence unless you select otherwise. So keep an eye on this phone number. I'm going to actually zoom in to 200% here. And this is the original file, and we can clearly read that the number is 215-600-3773. And a little free advertising probably won't hurt these guys. What I'm gonna do now is switch to the proxy media, and that is as simple as clicking the view menu right next to the current zoom and choosing proxy. You will immediately see that we have lost a significant amount of detail across this entire image. It is very, very muddy. But you only use proxy media to compile a rough cut or a daily, especially if time is of the essence or you're working on the go with a laptop. And this is the workflow. We're only using the proxy media as a kind of placeholder for our original media. So any changes or edits we make to the project in proxy format carry all the way through to the finished product. So while in proxy view, I'm gonna trim up a couple of these clips. Maybe we could take this part right here, trim that. I'm gonna set my view back to fit. Uh, this clip can be cut down pretty significantly. So we'll do this. Uh, we don't need this entire time-lapse. Um, this is just really an example clip. We're good after she points right there. Here's some painting, I like that. Uh, here's a move, so I'm gonna cut a little bit off the beginning and it stops, so right here. And then maybe we'll start this clip right here and end it right there. So there's our proxy. There's a quick edit. Uh, I'm gonna take this clip and let's do a little bit of color correction on it. Um, let's bring the exposure down. Can make the blacks a little blacker. Bring this here. Let me bring the mids down a little bit. Boost the saturation overall. 
Um, let's create another color correction here. This one we will limit to just the sky. Or as much of the sky as we possibly can. So we have the sky uh, selected and we will um, make that a little bit bluer. There we go. Now again, I want you to really remember that this is all happening on the proxy clip. So if we zoom back in, we could see that the quality is not amazing. But the great thing is, all of those color corrections I just did apply to the original clip as well. So if we swing back here to this view, and you can see that I've done some color corrections. If we want to see what it looks like on the original clip, all we have to do is select optimized slash original. And my color corrections carry over. We're very quickly just making some of our edits on the proxies for the sake of speed, and then moving right along and exporting the original slash optimized versions. With us back on optimized slash original, you can see that we have the quality choice between better quality and better performance. Better quality selects your original media and better performance selects your optimized media. You shouldn't have any perceivable drop in quality switching between these two because it's very likely that the bitrate and color depth of the optimized ProRes 422 file we generated is far greater than your original media. And we can take a look right now. I am not really seeing a difference there. You're seeing it through a level of compression, YouTube compression and everything like that, but I can verify that very little if nothing is changing here. So you generate your proxy and optimize media in order to edit quickly in these view modes, which work wonders on low powered machines. And when you're ready to export, you can share like you always have and the output will use the high quality originals as the basis. It's hugely important especially when working with RAW or 4K files. So now you have your project done and export it, and let's say you want to archive it. As it stands, you'd have to move the footage import folder onto an external drive, move the library file, relink the original files from the newly moved footage import folder, and then you can archive it and make sure that everything's in the same spot. Alternately, Final Cut offers the consolidate button to easily copy everything into the library for archiving. So to do that, just make sure that your library is selected and we're back at the library properties window and then press the consolidate button. The window that pops up will ask if you wanna move your optimized and proxy files as well. But since they already live in the library, they won't be touched. So let's just press okay. So to refresh the library properties window, just click on a clip or a project and then click on the library again. So now you could see over here that this library has jumped up to 11.6 gigabytes. And again, down at the bottom, we can see that all of the content now lives inside of the library, original media, optimized, and proxy. As a spot check, you could also right click on any clip in the browser over here and choose reveal in finder. You can see here that it has actually opened up the library that we were already browsing in. So media management, media management, original media. Also, the file sizes here match up exactly with the ones in the footage import folder. And here is another good point. When you consolidate in Final Cut Pro 10, it does a copy operation and not a move. So this footage still lives on my boot drive as well as in my library now. If I no longer want this on my boot drive, I have to delete this folder. Let's swing back into Final Cut. Now at this point, let's say your edit is locked, you're ready to move on to your next project. You've consolidated and you could simply move this library off of your working drive and be done with it. But after generating all of these proxy and optimized files, if we go back to our library properties, we are at a significantly higher number here with this optimized and proxy media than we were if we just had the originals alone. What I do is delete both of my proxy and optimized files before archiving to save that space. Unsurprisingly, Final Cut makes this very easy to do. What you wanna do is make sure that the library is selected and then go up to File, Delete Generated Library Files. From here, you would click the box to delete optimized media and proxy media. Deleting render files is also an interesting option as well. And here's your quick primer on what render files are. 
Say we take this clip of the sky that we color corrected, and let me fit this back into view again here. And we apply the 50s TV filter to it right here. Perfect. We can see the dotted lines indicating that this needs to be rendered. So what I'm going to do is press Control R to render just this clip, and the dots are gone. Later, we decide we don't want that effect because it's awful. And so we go up to our inspector, select it, and press Delete. But as luck would have it, the client insists we keep the effect, so we drag 50s TV back onto our clip. Notice we don't have to render it again. The dots are not there. That's because Final Cut keeps the render files for all of the effects we've applied, even if we don't end up using them. Therefore, the option to delete only unused render files can save you quite a bit of space, depending on how long you've been experimenting with things like video effects or color grading. And that is the long and short of both media management and working with optimized slash proxy media in Final Cut Pro 10. I would like you to use your newfound skills to get your edits done much faster, but then make sure to free up the space on your hard drives by clearing off this optimized proxy and unused render file media. Otherwise, your hard drives may have an uprising. I don't know. I don't know. Thank you for watching. If you found it useful, please give it a good rating on iTunes or subscribe on YouTube as it will help others find and join our wonderful little group here. Or don't do any of that and enjoy the free knowledge. It's really your call. If you have any questions or have an idea of something you'd like to see covered, you can reach out via the website at theprimarystoryline.com or email theprimarystoryline at gmail.com. Again, thank you so much, and I will see you all on the next episode of The Primary Storyline.